Now, last couple of weeks, I talked about avoiding as many states of regret as possible. And believe me, I put myself into a lot of states of regret. And, and basically, you have to make a decision and then you have to live with it. And living with it is the hard part. Anyway, one of my clients last week had pointed out that when CFLT was dropping like a stone, he was upset because he didn't sell it the day before. And then by the end, of the, day, the end of the day, it came back nicely. He tried to say in the following day, it came back even more. Now, this one's been a bit of a bumpy ride. Kind of reminds me of that MTTR we had not that long ago. But one of you guys was upset about the trading, the way the trading went, I should say, on one day. And I asked him, you know, what's what's got you upset? And it was one of the stocks in, in the service. Uh, YMM, and we showed that example last week. Well, CFLT has become the new MTTR or new YMM. It's kind of all over the place, and it's really not a problem as long as it stays above the stop. And if it goes below the stop, then it's no longer a problem. I don't know. Easier said than done. But as I say, ad nauseum, with the trading service, my life is so much easier with those stocks because I recommend those stocks. I know where I'm getting in. I know where I'm getting out. I know how much, I know how much I'm gonna put on. I try not to vary too much from the original plan. A little discretion every now and then can go a long ways as I preach. But for the most part, when I separate my watch list out and I have a watch list where I have the service stocks and if that's getting whacked, I just look carefully at where all the stops are, and if there's no action to be taken, yeah, I drop an F-bomb, but I get on with my life, and I don't stress out and go through this mental masturbation of should I get out, should I stay, what should I do? The plan is already laid out for me. Now, I make it look a lot easier than it really is, but if you can be flippant in your trading, and more importantly, flippant in your execution, and just say, well, if this thing stops me out, what's his name? Paul, Paul Giamatti? As uh, he was in John Adams, playing John Adams. I said good day, sir. <laughs> I've yet to watch that. I guess I need to watch it because I quote that quote. And that actually helps me. I kind of laugh a little bit after I do it. I'm still pissed, but I'd laugh a little. But sometimes it could be that easy, okay? Just follow the plan. I know, easier said than done. We talked about reducing internal conflicts. One thing you could do is re reduce your observations. If I'm looking at, especially if it's intraday stuff I wanna do, looking at three or four or five stocks, a lot of times the best thing for me to do is just put in a bunch of alerts and then go off and do what I have to do, work on my slides or whatever, record my trading simplified show or whatever the case may be. Use limit orders for IPTs and trailing stops when you have a decent move. What I'm talking about there is, let's say you're looking for four points on a trade and uh, you're up about five points, you know, with the gap over, let's say gaps up overnight, and then you, you were up like three or four points a day before, and now you're up five or six points. Well, you've already kind of beat the initial profit target, so to speak. So in a case like that, you could put in a trailing stop on half of your position and squeeze out a little bit more. And that's something we talk about quite often. You got to be careful with not to play both ends against the middle. And that's one advantage I have of having this educational business. So one of the downfalls is <laughs> of it is that uh, it stresses me out a lot because sometimes I realize I might be being a hypocrite or I'm doing things I shouldn't do, even though I should know better. And I got out of about 90% of my Shiba Inu and I have a little small token position left, I don't know, 15 million or whatever, I forget how many, <laughs> it's not much, you know, and I'm sitting there watching it and I can't decide whether I want it to go up or down, you know, so you got to be kind of careful to try to play both ends against the middle, it's like you can't paint yourself to that corner or put yourself in that situation, it's like if it goes down, I feel good because I sold 90% of it, if it goes up, then it'll be okay because I still have a little bit left. But you, you can't, again, put yourself in a lose-lose situation. And, and sometimes 
I'll end up with puts on something. And then before you know it, I'll end up with calls. And, and that's a very dangerous thing to do. Follow your plan. Geez, how, how often could we, do I have to beat that dead horse? How often do I need to relearn that lesson too? And then I put this in last minute, and this is something I've talked quite a bit about before. And this goes back to, to Mark Douglas. If there's fear or animosity or whatever other emotions, over emotions, I should say, in your trading, then you haven't fully accepted the risk. Okay. And I'm guilty of that one too sometimes. If you're if you're trading at a proper size, it shouldn't stress you out a lot. And by the way, if you were trading at a proper size and it stresses you out a lot, you're a little newer to trading, then by all means reduce your share size down until it becomes a little bit more second nature to be able to follow that plan. 